So I'd like to add my welcome to Jean's, to welcome you all here this morning and also to welcome those that are joining us online. And so today we are celebrating the sixth Sunday after Trinity. So in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And so this morning we gather here in the name of the living Christ to worship God, our Father, Creator and Sustainer. And so we prepare to worship by saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Knowing that God is patient with us, we come to church not because we are saints, but because we are sinners. Sinners who are willing to strive for something better. And so I invite you to confess your sins as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to end what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. And we stand now to say the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Lord Holy, Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we sit for our readings. Do not fear or be afraid. Am I not 
told you from of old and declared it. You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock, I know not one. The second reading is from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our own spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. And that's the truth of God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, glory to you, Lord. He put them, he put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let everyone with ears listen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now when I moved into the vicarage a little over two years ago, the garden was full of weeds. The house had been occupied for several, unoccupied for several months. And although the lawns had been regularly cut, the borders were full of stinging nettles and brambles. However, as I started to clear away the weeds, I looked more closely and there were some beautiful shrubs hidden amongst them, as well as a set of steps that I didn't even know existed. I also decided to leave some of the nettles in some of the corners of the garden because even though they are a painful nuisance to us humans and classed as a weed, nettles are extremely important and beneficial plants because they support many species of insects. They are the food for caterpillars of numerous species such as peacock, red admiral and small tortoiseshell. Now in today's gospel reading, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, or the tares, as you hear it called in the more traditional translations, and tares were a poisonous weed called a bearded darnel. And it was a variety of rye grass, which in its early stages of growth was indistinguishable from wheat. They couldn't be told apart. So if you didn't know there was darnel growing in your field, then until the stalks produced the seed. And by then, it was too late because the roots would be so interwoven that to pull up the weeds, you'd also end up pulling up the wheat. And the parable was probably written about the time that there was the final breaking apart of the Jewish and Christian communities. And Jesus addresses that the kingdom was for, sorry, that Jesus addresses the problem of sinners in the kingdom of God. The Pharisees believed that the kingdom was only for saints and that sinners should be ruthlessly dwelt with. But Jesus didn't agree, and this parable clearly shows that. The main point is that the last judgment of the kingdom will be a mixed bag of good and evil. And as we think about this parable and the field of wheat and tares being a mixture of good and evil, we can perhaps reflect on that and how that reflects into our, the context of our world today and the way that we regard other people and also how it speaks to us personally. When we listen to the news headlines at the moment, we seem to be engulfed with the chaos of a new COVID-19 world order with ongoing loss and sadness for many, many families, the possibility of a coronavirus resurgence in the winter, confusion about masks, recession, and also the impending disaster of the virus rampaging through the already war-torn countries. And it feels like goodness and light are being smothered by something much darker. Or to use the imagery in Matthew's parable, it's as if somebody has come into the field of wheat and sowed seeds everywhere a field where healthy wheat is lost in a sea of wild, uncontrollable weeds. And it's tempting as we look at those new stories to somehow try and cover up the bad, to try and look only at the wheat and try not to see the weeds at all. 
And it's equally problematic to fail to see any wheat and feel overwhelmed by the wild, uncontrollable weeds. But like the farmer, maybe we need to respond by care, being carefully looking at the whole field, viewing all the weeds and recognising that the wheat and the weeds will coexist for a while. And we can then try and spot the still growing weeds while praying for the eventual harvest. And as we look around us at people that we live alongside, there are people that we will find difficult. And it can be tempting to judge people as being good or bad, or saints and sinners. However, human beings are complex. We cannot easily categorise people as being good or bad. There's a mixture of good and evil to be found in every heart. And like the nettles in the vicarage garden, that which are annoying when they hurt us, they can still be beneficial. Everyone has vices and virtues, and we should try and concentrate on the latter. There's a saying that all saints have a past, and all sinners have a future. And when we consider people in history, there are many who may have done great acts of good, but still have vices. We take the example of Oskar Schindler, the Je German industrialist whose life was portrayed in the film Schindler's List. He saved over a thousand Polish Jews from the concentration camps, but at the same time, he was a womanizer, he drank, and he exploited the Jews as a cheap source of labour. The parable tells us that judgment is God's work. And it's interesting that the workers are told not to try to gather up the weeds, but to leave them until the harvest, when they will be separated from the wheat. And Jesus explains that this means that good and evil will coexist until the Son of Man intervenes at the end of the age. The parable is not suggesting that we should try to deal with the evil, but that we should wait for God. Now last week I reflected on how the different types of ground in the parable of the sower can be likened to different stages of our faith journey. And so too, the field in this parable can be likened to our own lives. We too have dark sides of ourselves, weeds that grow up and threaten to engulf us with feelings of jealousy, anger, bitterness, selfishness or greed. And we all need to recognise our frailties and be aware of our need for God and for others. And all of us can look at ourselves and try to think, what is the good wheat in our lives? And where are the weeds? And we can ask God what to do with them. We might not like the weeds or understand them, but they are part of our reality. Jesus asks us to be patient with them and to trust that God will sort them out in the end. And it's interesting to note that once the stalks and the wheat and tares grew and they were thre threshed and the grain was separated, that they were bundled and burned as fuel for cooking and heating. The Greeks and the Romans also found that the seeds from the tares, even though they were poisonous, in small doses, they had a medicinal quality. In God's sight, nothing is useless, nothing is lost. In God's hands, everything can serve a useful purpose. And the prayer that I've always found useful, particularly when I've come up against things that, I really, that really challenge me, is the prayer of serenity. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom 
to know the difference. Amen. And so we now stand to affirm our faith. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in one from whom every family in heaven and on earth is known. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from our hand. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. We pray for all the young people who have missed their schooling this year and are moving on to high school without the normal celebrations at the end of term. For those who still await the decisions regarding university places and those leaving university and school who are searching for the job at this difficult time. And we ask you to be with them in their way forward. Also, we pray for the staff of our school, for their commitment and love to the children attending, and for the work offered via the internet for those at home. We pray for all of us here, for our families and our friends. Inspire us to work at our relationships and remind us to welcome you into every situation we meet. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all whose faith has been tested throughout COVID-19. May we know the certainty of your abiding presence. We thank those who have helped or forgiven us this week and help us to be more prepared to take the initiative in caring for others and to take ourselves less seriously. May your spirit of forgiveness and justice spread throughout the social and political fabric of our world so that governments are able to rule wisely, discuss differences calmly and be prepared to negotiate rationally. We pray for all those people in the world who are caught up in areas where there is famine, floods and wars or any other atrocities, especially the innocent victims and those who ever, wherever they are working to help the situation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for the sick, the injured and the distressed, for those who cannot see the way forward and need support for the dying. And for those who comfort them, may your love and healing presence bring wholeness and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all those who have died, that are falling asleep to pain or suffering, 
They may wait to the joy and freedom of your heaven. May we one day share with them the joy of being in your presence forever. We thank you for the many blessings of life which you give us each day, for the wonder of your creation and the joy and comfort of your presence. Merciful Father, accept any prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we now would stand as we prepare to share the peace rather than exchange the peace. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we can say, peace be with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and you of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and loved your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, we saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine and pour may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you and gave it to them and said, 
Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Luke and St. Wilfred and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power of the Lord. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so I say for you all, the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The glory of God the Creator be yours. The glory of Christ the Redeemer be yours. The glory of the Spirit, the Sanctifier, be yours. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love, today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.